morning we, uh, I'll read this passage of scripture here. This morning when we come across where he said, I, I clothe you with, I long to clothe you, paraphrasing with white raiment. Isaiah 61.10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He's covered me with robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Remember that back in Revelation this morning chapter uh, 3 verse uh, 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 verse 18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried with fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed this is the robe of righteousness in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 talks of this white robe of, of, of righteousness and, the, and how it's a great joy for us, this garment of salvation. So, pretty interesting tie into what we looked at this morning with the church of Laodicea. Very interesting. Anybody have an input on Laodicea? There's, there's a passage where we're going to go tonight, but does anybody have anything? <clears throat> the background. Yes, the background of Laodicea was very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting background. It's very interesting how the Lord Jesus Christ tied it tied the background in to what he was trying what he was the point he was getting across as far as gold being tried in fire and you know and as far as uh, the white raiment remember they made they were very popular in making uh, black raiment black cloth something that they sold throughout that part of the land and the Lord said basically I'm gonna I long to give you a a white raiment and the ISAV, you know, the ISAV was very popular. It's, it's something that they, that they produced, that they sent around. It had great medical accomplishments. But the Lord said, the ISAV that I give you is far greater than the ISAV that you're getting now. And it, you know, kind of reminds you that passage of Scripture where uh, the Lord... I forget who he was talking to. Was it the woman at the well? Or where he said, you know, if you drink of this well. Who was he talking to when he said, you drink of this well, uh, you know, you, you'll, 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 you'll drink and you'll thirst again. But the, but the well of water that I give you, you will never thirst. The Samaritan woman, you'll never, you'll never thirst again. So, but. Uh, I think one thing, as much as he chewed him out, yeah. he still said, Still his bride. Yeah. As much as he chewed them out, yeah. as disobedient as they were, they were still his. Yeah, still his. Still his. He didn't pull no punches, did he? And I like as Bob always says, I said this this morning, he he was he was the master teacher and always will be the master teacher. And he pulled no punches. And like Justin said, as much as he chewed them out, they were still his bride. Yes, it's like with your children. Yes. No. 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 Exactly right. Yes. 
the last thing he longed, he wanted to see was them go down this road. And if you look, like we said this morning, at the first six that he mentioned, there's been some comments about that he mentioned the Laodicean church last because the world will be in that situation. It'll be like a, it'll be like that in the end times. And there might be some validity to it. I don't know, but the other six that he mentioned, it kind of, if you look on the map of the seven churches, he mentioned everyone in order. He kind of went boom, 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 boom Laodicea. So he kind of went around the, 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 the out, and then he just ended up with Laodicea. And that's kind of what he did here. But maybe, too, that just like people mentioned in the past and still mention today, that this will, this will be the last, the, it'll be the picture of the church in the latter days, the, the great falling away. And I don't know, you know, very interesting how people have brought that up in that. In that. But they started out like every church, Epaphras, I'm sure, uh, if you turn to turn to Colossians real quick, Colossians chapter four, real fast. If uh, well, not real fast, but turn to Colossians four. Um, if I can find it, I didn't go to Colossians four this morning for some reason. Maybe that's because we're going to go there this evening. But if you look in Colossians chapter four, verse twelve. Jesus is writing, or Jesus, Paul's writing the letter to the Colossians, okay, we, 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 to, to the church of Colossae. And verse 12 in chapter 4 to the letter to the Colossians says this Epaphras, who is one of you, Epaphras, who is one of you, he, he, he's, he's the believer, a believer, he's one of you, he's a servant of Christ, saluteth you, he sends his greetings. He's always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect, complete in all the will of God. Papyrus longed, he had much prayer he, for the church. Okay? And as we read down there, verse 13, For I bear him record, okay, Papyrus, he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and in Heropolis. Okay? This is where people or interpreters are picking up that Epaphras had a little bit to do with, with the uh, founding of the church of Laodicea and the founding of Heropolis in the, in the original language. It pretty much leans that way. But, but here Paul says, For I bear him record that he has a great zeal for you. He prays for you constantly. Laodicea wasn't always like this, were they? How we seen them this morning. But how easy you can fall in that, right? How easy you can find yourself there. Out of all the churches, they were the seven churches, they were the richest. I mean, they had it, they were pretty well loaded. Like we said before, they want it for nothing materialistic wise. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus Christ addresses that. You have need of nothing worldly. And who gave them all this? That's the amazing thing about it. The Lord allowed them, He blessed them with so much. And it reminds you of the Israelites in the Old Testament, how the Lord Jesus Christ at times would bless the Israelites with so much, didn't he? He even told them at times, he said, go to the enemy, okay, collect up all that you can, all the gold, the silver, all that you can from the enemy. It's yours, you can have it. They do it, and what do they do when they bring it back? They, they, they start melting it down and creating what? Idols. Idols. Incredible. Incredible. Started creating for themselves idols. With the Laodicean churches, I, I've, I, I've, I've planted this church in a, in a city that is a financial hub that wants for nothing. I've gave them the ability to, to discover uh, a, an eye ointment that will bring in finances. 
a wool, a black wool that will bring in finances. They have so much, and what do they do with it eventually? They just create for themselves an idol, right? They just start worshiping the finances, worshiping the money, worshiping everything they've ever accumulated. The outside area, right, found its way into the church. But we see with great zeal that Epaphras prayed for Laodicea, prayed for her, prayed for Heropolis, prayed for these cities, prayed for these churches, longed to see these churches stay focused on the Lord. To fervently strive and do the will of God. And listen, this should be a warning to us as a church. Correct? It should be a warning to us as individuals. How quick you can go from on top of the spiritual mountain, if you will, to down in the valley. But yet you're in the valley and you still think you're on the spiritual mountain. Right? If you flip, not to flip back, or you can, you can stay in Colossians if, right back in Revelation chapter. Jesus kind of alludes to that, doesn't he? In verse, uh, I don't know. Uh, because you say I'm rich and increased and I, ha I have need of nothing in verse 17. But you don't even realize that you are wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. You have the fullness of the world. You have the fullness of the world. Worldly wise, you want it for nothing else. And you don't even realize it. Back in Colossians chapter, chapter 4. Verse 13, for I'm bearing record that he has a great zeal, or he prays for you constantly, Laodicea, Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. There's so many people there for you to see that you succeed spiritually. To see that you don't get off course. We should be like that with each other, shouldn't we? Huh? You should see that I don't get off course. Right? I should see that you don't get off course. And we should be mature enough, spiritually speaking, to accept, accept it when somebody does address to us, hey, you're getting off course in how you're living or what you're doing or whatever the situation may be. Luke, the beloved physician, Demas, greets you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea, Nymphus and the church which is in his house. Pay respect for, to these people. Pay respect to the church. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of Laodiceans. That you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. We've talked about this in the past. Listen church. We are not in a spectator sport. Okay. This is not a spectator sport. We're all called to do something. We're all called to stand for the truth. We're all called to come and worship. We're all called to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a battle. This is a warfare. This is a struggle we are in daily. But Satan in his, uh, in his conniving, deceiving ways has, has come up with ideas and ways to lull the church to sleep. To make them think everything is fine. Right? Revelation 3.17. To make them think they're fine. To make them think it's okay not to come and corporately worship anymore. To make them think it's okay just to come and go as you please spiritually. 
to make them think everything's okay just to be the spectator looking down at the church and not getting involved, to let them think it's fine. But it's not, is it? It's not. See, that's what got Laodicea in trouble. They thought everything was fine. And it was a slow fade. I'm sure it was. It doesn't happen overnight. It can't happen overnight. It can't. It don't work. It don't. On a long term, on a long term, it will work. Yeah. That, that's how your enemy will get you. That's what the ink line does. He drills him out of holes. And he's patient. He waits. Yeah. And when that bug or something comes through, he, don't, he lays down there. Revelation 3.17 puts us, speaking of what David said, how it kind of opens your eyes to other parts of Scripture. You have increased with goods, you have need of nothing. It reminds me of that passage of Scripture, okay, paraphrasing, where Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. That's a rare animal. That's a rare person. It's a rarity to find somebody very wealthy and yet sold out for the Lord. Because most people will do what? They'll lean. They'll lean. What? It, it, it's there's a divide. And obviously, for the Church of Laodicea, they couldn't pull it off. They couldn't do it. There's leaning on what they had. Yeah. They can see what they had. You can't see Jesus. If you don't see him, you can receive, you can see the results of him. You can see the way the spirit moves. You can see that. But it's like looking at the wind. You can see the what the wind touches and everything. But you can't put your hands and get a hold of it and hold it. And there's nothing wrong with what they had. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. But the point about it is, though, so they no longer had it. It had them. Yeah. And there was the situation. There's the problem. There's yes. the problem. And they did not have to fall into this state. There was no rule that said, if you get, uh, <coughs> get wealthy, you're going to be like this. You have to be this way. God said you don't have to. I give it to you. You use it. Yeah. If, if your eyes get to seeing, it's it's like the Israelites often wondered. They wanted a God. They cut them one out. They wanted a God they could hold and, and tell what to do. Yeah. God Almighty, you don't tell him what to do. He goes on and does what he wants, and his plan is going to come about no matter what I say or think. Yeah. And, and that is what we have to depend on. We have to depend on a God that's going to take care of us no matter what, no matter what I think. I'll get up in the morning and I might have a crying pity, uh, pity party. I don't know. But it don't change God's mind. No. He'll still say, you go on and you serve me today. Mm -hmm. You go on. Yeah. He 
even though Juan may not like it, not a big girl feeling, the Lord will be telling you, say, what's wrong with you? You're drunk. I'll say, no, I'm not. But my mouth says, I'm not, but my attitude says, I am. Yeah. And it gets you. Well, that's how they were. They're, they're, you know, they say that they still love the Lord. They love the Lord. They love the Lord. They love the Lord. And they're not going to ever walk away from the Lord. But the Lord says, you, you say all this, but your life is proven otherwise. You're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. How many Christians do you see like that today? Yeah, a lot. And they'll, they say I'm a Christian, and I'm living for the Lord. But I go to church every Sunday. I, I go and I attend and I do this and I do that. I go here and I go there, and you look in their face, and they'll. But their face don't tell that. <coughs> their mouth and their attitude says, "I'm fine, I'm great, we're doing great, doing doing everything." But it's not true. <laughs> it's not showing. Sure. No. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's pretty simple, isn't it? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's like Tina said, feed my sheep. If you love me, if you're called to teach, then Peter, feed my sheep if you love me. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's not hard to understand. If you love me, you'll long to worship me. Right? Yes. You'll long to be where my people reside. You'll long to read my words. You'll long to listen to what I have to say. You long to pray, Tina said. And Paul says he can't do it. He keeps walking back to the yep. wrong way. And we have to understand that. We'll have a pity party. And after Jesus tells the well, lay of the sins, you know, you know, I'm going to spew you out. You don't taste good. And, and you've done this, this, and this. What? Anybody want to come in? Come on in. Yeah. Wide open. Yeah. Now, that's exactly what Justin, you're exactly right. Justin said, through it all, it's still his church. But see, in Colossians, they were meeting in a home. They were very small. Mm -hmm. As time went, you, you, this is that master teacher that Christ was. When your goal, yeah, you, you've got goal. But his goal is very special goal. It's been fired. All the draft is gone. Yeah. His goal is the divine righteousness. His goal. Then when we get to this black raiment, watch what he does. You knitted this. You grew it. You made it. You. I haven't heard anything about me. That is self-righteousness. Oops, there went the divine righteousness to self. That's man. That's mm -hmm. what we like. Well, okay. The, you guys have been making sad. You've done, you've done good work. But you didn't do it, boy. I did it. Yeah. I gave you that wisdom to figure out. Slap this gum together and put it. And guess what? You won't have that problem with the eyes. That it could probably have been a microbe in the dirt, and that's, it. It, that's irrelevant. God gave, so there once again, self is not divine. Mm -hmm. But yet, even through this rebuke, it's like a father to a son. Mm -hmm. I love you so much that if you'll get off, let's go in this pity pot. That's, that's what it is. Because, oh, things ain't good right now. No, they weren't good because you took me out of your church. Mm -hmm. You took me, Jesus Christ, away. The whole reason for this church was me, son. Where am I? Well, we'll get back. No, no, no. You're trying to divide me. I, I can't be. They, they tried to divide me on the cross, and they couldn't do it. And your little yeah. swirly ways are not going to divide me, yeah. son. But that's rebuking uh, as a father to a son. You can't kill him. You've got to shame on you. Come on. Get your banana foot in one bunch and we'll be okay. Come on. Now 
now come on in and let me sit down with you and let's study this. And Paul, he, he was telling them in Colossians, yeah, you've got this church, it's good. And it started out small, it did. Well, how often is money talked about in the Bible? It and sex is talked about in the Bible pretty much evenly. Mm -hmm. It is, it's there, you know. Yeah. How many times did the Jews go out and do crazy? Well, uh, we lost Sodom and Gomorrah and a whole bunch of families. And well, money's the same way. Yeah. Few. Yeah, we got a few Chick Fil A's. Yeah, we got a few nice businesses that really put God first. In, but we got bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches that don't even say God in this place because our our little rugs will roll up. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, man and his wisdom is all about man. Period. He's all about man. And we and, and this morning when we looked at 1 Corinthians at doing, doing Sunday school class, that's what's kind of sent Paul. Paul kind of got a little upset with the Corinthians because when, when they said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, now this I say that every one of you says, or some of you says that I'm of Paul, I'm of Paulus, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ. And he says, how in the world can Christ be divided in so many different ways? Amen. Speaking of what Bob just said about dividing Christ. Paul says, it's not happening. You can't divide Christ. But man in his wisdom says, I want to be of Paul. I'm following Paul. The other bunch says, well, I, I like Apollos a little bit better. Some says, I like Cephas. And there's a few that says, well, I'm of Christ, you know. And, and, but he says, is Christ divided? And I'm sure the bunch that says I was of Christ probably sat back with a big smile on their face. Was, we, 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 we went with the right one. You know, but that's just man again, a prideful man. Is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? No. Were, was, 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 were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. I thank God that I baptized none of you, he said, except Crispus and Gaius. Good grief, you don't want that hanging over me, acting the way you're acting now. Same as today. The really weird thing about it, my church, I'm following my church. Yes. This church and that church were all divided. Yes. And it was not ever intended to be that way. Yes. And that's what brought the, the, the fall to Laodicea. Laodicean church was division, was, was doing what they wanted to do, dividing Christ, and Christ was no longer the main priority. As Tina said, it's the same thing today. Listen, when a church falls today, it's the same as it was 2,000 years ago when it fell. Christ is no longer priority number one. He's no longer the priority. So what is the priority? I don't know. Whatever the church created in his mind for the priority. It can be anything. It's no longer the priority. It's just when they take Jesus Christ out. Yes. You don't have to have a priority. All you no. can say is there is no priority. They just Yes. What becomes the biggest interest, whether it's whether it's sporting events, whether it's a, a, the, the the children's ministry and quotations or whatever it is, okay? Certain things are fine. There's nothing wrong with certain things if they're kept in the right perspective and right corner of the situation. But nothing, absolutely nothing, no man, no person, no woman, no nothing should ever supersede Christ. Yes, you're exactly right. It should never supersede Christ. Nothing eclipses Jesus Christ. Amen. It don't. It just don't. I've seen a partial eclipse, and then whenever you get a partial eclipse, it's dingy. You get a full eclipse, you got total dark. But you got a church that's in a partial eclipse, you can't see well. You can't, you can't hardly see the reading. The light bothers you. You have light, but it aggravates you out. Mm -hmm. And when you get in this state, you're, you're, a, you're 
Jesus Christ has been partially eclipsed, and you can't no longer see straight. No. And then that's when you go on the rest of the way over. Yeah. You can. For exactly for the Laodicean church, he was no longer who he was. He was divided. He was split up. Still the same. I'm talking about to them, though. Yes. To them, yes. Man energy. Yes. And that's where the problem lies. Every single time, like David said. Yes. Out, and it will fall. And why is this? Because the preaching of the cross will be, has always been foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness. The weaker the Laodicean church become, the more the law started coming in. Why not? They weren't challenged. Right? They didn't look no different. Anybody. They didn't look no different. The church become more and more like the world, more and more accepting of the world. So more and more the loss finally found its way in. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to unto us what is saved, it is a power of God. Exactly what Jesus Christ was saying to the Laodicean church. Come back to me. To those of you that are perishing, it's foolishness. But as Justin said, you're still my church. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. They didn't have an excuse to stay where they was at. No. You, you fail and you get away from God, God would, wants you back. He wants you to come back. Because if that's the case, uh, Jesus would never went back to the yeah. one that was lost. 99, he left. He went, got, got that one. He ain't, he ain't going to grind you into a pulp and a powder. He wants you to come home. Yeah. He wants you to come home. He wants you to come back. And his hands are stretched out to these people. You, a lot of, I, 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 this has popped out of my mouth before. Poor God, where in the world are you at? He ain't left. He's not left at all. Now, at that time and place, I was pretty low, but I tell you what, he has not left anybody behind. We hear, we hear these men in the military. Don't leave nobody behind. I don't care if he's dead. They don't leave behind. Uh, God don't leave anybody. He does not leave you. He don't leave me. He does not do that even. I don't know where some of these churches, the Lord, the Lord is with them. It's like they've got no strength. Hmm. They've got, they go to church. They go Sunday, but when you ask them about this, they don't know nothing. This book here. Yeah. Yes. And it's pitiful. Yeah, and, Ecle and back in Colossians chapter 4, verse 16, and when the epistle is read, when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also to the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read this epistle from Laodicea. Okay, say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. In other words, say to Archippus, okay, this ministry that the Lord has gave you, do it. Do it. When the leadership fails to keep doing it, the church quickly, quickly, Will turn into a Laodicean church. Yes, it will. It'll quit clapping. Go back to the kings of Israel. Yes. Go back to the kings of Israel. Them nations, when they had a king on the throne that served God Almighty, they wasn't a better place to live than Israel. When they, I've seen some of them boys that come up as a king after their daddy died. They served, their daddy served God. And then here come a boy up. And they put him on the throne, and the first thing he does, he sets up idol worship. Yeah. And I, 
I thought to myself, you had a godly daddy. What is your problem? But he's got the same problem all of us got. It's sin. Mm -hmm. Wanting to go his own yeah. way. Wanting to do what he wants. And letting other people influence him. There's yeah. a lot of that went on. Oh yeah, well, he says take heed to the ministry. In other words, pay attention to the ministry. Pay attention to your calling in the church. Somebody in the Laodicean church let the ball go, let drop the ball. Somebody did. David, I believe it's more than one somebody. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. His, 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 church, his church here was, I am saying anybody can fall, anybody can no. take a mistake and trick, anybody. Anybody can see it. We've all seen it. We'll we'll do it before we go to bed tomorrow night, Lord willing, tomorrow come. But you don't have to stay in it. There was more than one involved in this church. Absolutely. This yeah. I understand. I know yeah. you understand. But what gets me is where did it start at? What's the point of origin? You have a bar, they go to the point of origin. If you have a problem, go to the point of origin. Now, was it in the leadership or what? It sounds like it was leadership. Yeah. It's he got, got away from God. He got into theory. <clears throat> See, now, these, these, these boys that stood and preached at these churches, they wasn't bad men. They was doing the best they could. They thought they was using what God had given them. They was using their knowledge. They wasn't seeking the Spirit to show them what he was saying. That's, that's why they got they had a separation there between them men. Them, them men there when he's talking about who baptized them. Hey, hey they, they was all probably preaching the word, but they was because they were carnal. There was a little bit of themselves went into each message. And I believe he I believe he tells us to stay away. Because that's what that's our common ground, you see. If, if we don't got common ground, then we're going to be fine. Because everybody ain't going to think just exactly the same. But God's word never changes. No. And it's the same to you as it used to me. Yep. But go to Paul. When he got after Peter, it wasn't just Peter put the book aside. It wasn't. He took his eyes off Christ. He had done it before. And folks, when you take your eyes off Christ, you've opened the door, and good old Lucifer is going to find the perfect bait in his box to hook you. And you're going to bite it if you keep your eye on Christ and you only teach out of this book. Yeah. Nothing else. And it doesn't yeah. matter if it was one person or ten. This happened over a period of time. Somebody blubbered. And old Lucifer said, ha, ha, that's the one I needed. He hooked him. And he might, wait a minute, he had his eyes off Christ, so it's done. It don't matter what yeah. he did. And that's how churches fail. When you take your <coughs> eyes off Christ and you say anything other than, you got to go to this book and quote it. You better read it so you don't make a mistake. Human error is one of them things that, Unfortunately, all us two-legged nerves have, you're going to screw up. Read it out of this book. And you'll find it at least three or four times in this book. On that subject, you're in good shape. Yeah. If you don't, you better sit down and figure out what you've done because you've made a mistake. And Paul had to rebuke poor old Peter. He had taken his eyes off Christ once before and almost drowned. Well, he... <laughs> He almost drowned in front of the church because he let people start liking him. You ain't up there to be my friend. <laughs> you ain't. I'm sorry. I like you as a man, Amen. but as my pastor, I want to hear what you say about this thing yes. right here. Yes. Yeah. And if I can't come up to you afterwards and say, partner, I really appreciate you putting out his word firmly, with conviction, and accurately. That ought to be Pat on your back to say, okay, and we'll do it again. Yeah. yeah I like how he, he told him, he said, take heed to the ministry. Yeah. Take heed to the ministry. You know, we can look at this in, in today's context. 
what the, the edit committee here in Lake Oasis, and they said, hey, we got all this ice out. Why don't we use that as an outreach event? We'll get all the poor people in town to come in. We'll treat their eyes with this yeah. ice out that we got all kinds of, and we'll, we'll preach the gospel to them. And what happened? A couple people got saved. They joined the church. They were like, okay, well, that worked really great. We're going to do this every year. Pragmatism crept in. We're going to do this every year because it worked. That I said it worked. No, the gospel worked. Yeah. And eventually, you know, 10 years down the road, they're like, well, the I said is the draw, not Jesus. Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to skip the gospel message. We're just going to have the I said. 20 years down the road, it's still just the I said. They've left. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The power. The power. The power. Like how Paul always said, some plant, some water, it's Christ that reaps the increase. Amen. You can't leave the power, as Justin said. You cannot leave the power. The power resides in the spirit of Christ. The power resides in the spirit of draw. The power resides there. Yes. They begin the church and begin to act like those people. Exactly. But it comes straight from the top. Yep. It trickles down. It has to the word has to be preached. The word has to be preached. Tina said it has to be. You know, Tim Chalice, uh, he's a pastor and a writer from up in Canada. Uh, this conference I was at recently. He said, We want the world to feel welcome in our worship. We don't want them to feel comfortable in our worship service. They're welcome to come in and observe, but lost people don't worship the true God. They can sing their hearts out. They ain't worshiping God. They're just, they can observe. Yeah. But we don't want them to feel comfortable. If they're comfortable in here, then we're doing it wrong. Yeah. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. So we were talking about uh, Dave. Was talking about David. Johnson was talking about the uh, leaders. Look like the leaders were being involved. And my um, Revelation 3.20 references over to Hebrews. And it says, and that this throws it back on the church. But exhort one another daily while it is called today Exactly right. Do you see much exhorting going on here? No. <laughs> I mean, really? No. I, I, they'll tell you in school, uh, praise your youngest when you do something like that. Lift them up. They'll tell them, they'll tell you to do that. Yeah. Makes them, makes them want to do better. It lifts them up. They don't, they ain't dragging their head over a bad grade and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with lifting somebody up. point that we will fail and we will sin. There will never be a day in my life that I will not do something wrong because I live here. Amen. And I don't, I may live here, but I don't have to join this world. Yeah. 
what D.L. Moody said. You can live here, but don't join it. We're a pilgrim or we're a stranger, and if the day we get saved, we are a stranger. We ain't welcome here no more. I mean, you're not. You can, you got your friends and stuff, and everything like that. I understand, but you're not welcome here. And long as, long as you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, and you preach straight from this book, and you you study this book, and you trust this book, you won't be led wrong. Now, you might see something in there you don't understand and you don't know nothing about. Fine. I ain't going to know it all, know it. But the point about it is, one main thing, Jesus Christ said, you can keep your eyes on me. Yeah. And I won't tell you how old, close old Peter was when he about drowned. He was within arm's reach. Because Jesus reached up and got hold of his hand. Amen. And that's how close you can be to God Almighty Son. And you are still sink if you take your eyes off him. Mm -hmm. You'll be right at his feet. Yep. That's how close the devil works. And that's tight. It's very interesting. Very interesting how you said that. I learned that in Bible school, if you want to know. <laughs> when you were a kid or just recently? No, no. I didn't put that together. I didn't put that together to our life Bible school. Wow. Well. Because I remember asking Bob, I asked Bob, I said, what's the fourth watch of the night? Bob said he'd have to look it up, and he did. And that is, the fourth watch of the night is, it's light, but you still can't see exactly. You can see, it's but you three can't. To six, You're yeah. in between the light and the dark. And when you see that time of the morning, you really can't believe what you're seeing. You would see something coming, but you're not positive what it is. And that's when Peter said, hollered at him, and said, Lord, if it's you, if it is you, bid me come. And then Peter got out of the boat. But he asked the Lord, if, if it's you, you tell me to come. And he trusted him enough to crawl out of the boat in a storm and walk on the water and walk up to the feet of Jesus. And then he said, then he seen the waves. Then, with an arm's reach, he looked looked off of Jesus Christ, and he started to sink. And he he had enough time to say, "Lord, save." And Jesus Christ reached out and got hold of him. I learned that in our last Bible school. Yeah. I didn't realize how close Peter was when he when he started to sink, and that's close. I noticed. Don't tie into it, but uh, it kind of reminded me of what you just said. Even at the very end, I mean. The Laodicean church, the Lord's arms were there, and he's knocking on the door, and he's, you know, come on, grab a hold of me again. Grab a hold of me again. You've tried it your way for a while, and look what it got you. It got you a house full of infidels. A house full of lost people. Grab a hold of me again. Yeah. And that success yeah. is found only in Christ. Found only in Christ. I'll never forget that. He was just You're exactly right. He drilled that home to us. Yes, he did. So just remember, be very careful. You're not above making an absolute mess of your life, spiritually speaking. Okay? I'm not above it. You're not above it. Some will say they are. Some will act like they are. But the truth is they're not. We said it before. Epaphras, if he was the one, never dreamed. Paul, never seen it. To where Laodicean church would be in such a mess. But it eventually found itself there. Spiritually speaking. It's, and Paul, this reminds me of the younger generation that we are raising. Mm -hmm. We get our 20-year-olds and even our early 30-year-olds. Don't you sometimes think you raise them up in church and then they go away? And uh, it, it feels like the devil. Yeah. 
you raise them up, and eventually they're going to have to walk out the door and fail a lot, but prayerfully they succeed. That's when you really are tested about your trust in God. Yeah. You're tested to the limit. And you'll wonder time and again, what did I say, what did I do? And I'll tell you all, I've said this and I got, I got to learn a lesson over there. That I tried, was trying to take care of things that I could no longer put my hands on and control. And I've come to one conclusion. Like old uh, Solomon, I come to the conclusion of the matter. The same God that took care of my young and here at the house will take care of Mount John. They may go their way. They will. But I've got to trust in the God of the Bible to take care of them or I will not sleep. Mm-hmm. And I could go to sleep on the cactus and hot rock. Right, I can go to sleep in sure right off the bat. I'll kick back and I'm, I'm ready to snore. <laughs> Come on. That is one thing that kept me awake is that. That was one line away from home knowing he was in a bad position. And I, 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 I come to the conclusion the night I did, a lot of sleep, I, buddy, I went out like a lot and I slept like a baby. You can't take care of everybody. You cannot do that. You can't save them. You cannot lift them up and and bring them back. It takes a hand of God Almighty, and sometimes God Almighty hand His hand is a little rough of bringing them back. And you know it, and yeah. I know it, and we know what they can face. But leave it alone, and it's hard to leave it alone. You want you don't want somebody hurt that you love. You don't want them to be hurt. But it, uh, wait. A as you're looking, and that's faith, isn't it? Yeah. Resting in the Lord God, whom you can't see, whom you can't touch, but still resting in Him. But down there in verse 20, He said, Behold, I stand in mm-hmm. How close is that? Like Peter, how close is a door? When you hear a knock, how close are you going to that and on the other side? You're that far apart. Mm-hmm. And you can hear Jesus Christ doing me. And you know who it is. I've been there. I do know who it is. Don't say you don't know. Yes. Don't say I ain't being convicted of what I'm doing. You know. Yeah. And you've got to trust him. Yeah. And I do have my time since I've gone off my fuzzy little head about a little bit. <laughs> you, think, you think I trust God till he says let's see how much. Amen. And he'll show you. Yep. He'll show hey, you how much. Serving the serving the Lord ain't a burden. Serving God ain't a burden. It's an interesting life to live. It is. You can look, you can look at it and say it's so dull. I see Christians that that they're they're dull. There's no life in them. You there ain't no excitement in them when they go to talking about the Bible. You it just it ain't there. It's like the light bulb's out. And it, they, you don't see it. And uh, they, maybe they don't, uh, maybe they don't just see it or let their life go out. Yeah. But you ought to have a little fire in your belly. I mean, come on. You've got to have a light inside of you. You've got nothing to offer except Jesus Christ. That's all we've got. No. And we'll never have nothing else. It's, that's it. Paul said, Paul said, bring nothing to you but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I have nothing else to give to you. And look what we're doing in our world today. We're offering offering everything but Jesus. I mean, there's a lot that He could have told them about everything. He said, I come to you bearing one message. Yep. God. Yep. One way. You know? That's how how He preached. That's how He preached. He preached one message. Salvation. Salvation, repentance. That's what he was called to do, and that's what he did. Repent. Repent. I think it's Matthew 5, 16. If you want to check up on yourself, it says, let people see your good works. Yeah. Thank you.
Yeah. Exactly right. Because that's what you want. They'll be looking at God and not nope. looking at Jesus. So hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Believe their own press release, Tina said. <laughs> Amen. So take what we learned today, take what we learned this morning and this evening. Wow, did I learn a lot from you guys and learned a lot from what the Word of God has to say through you guys. And it's just always a joy to come together and to, uh, to look upon His Word. Something off the, the path that I, that, that I did learn is what David said that I've never seen before, that Peter was pretty close to Christ when he took his eyes off of him. Never realized that before. Very interesting. You can be, you can be so close to Jesus that you don't think you will fail. Yeah. And when you don't think you will fail, Exactly. Hey, you do. You do. My mama told me all that. I mean, it's very true. I've seen it over and over again. Never seen that. Just like Peter with the, with denying Christ. I'll never leave you, Lord. Yeah. And that's after y'all was thrown in the water. So, we're all the same. We just look different. We're all the same. We're just in different times. Different, different times. We are blessed people. Yeah. Lord willing, if you could be back here Wednesday night, again, we will look upon God's word and uh, see what it has to say. Take it in its truths, its depth, and uh, apply it back to our lives. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we love you and we thank you for this time that you've given us today. Lord, it's just been a joy. To look upon your word, to take it in, its depth, its riches, Lord, its meaning. To look at the church of Laodicea this morning and this evening, Lord, and see their, uh, their failures. They had some success from the beginning, at the beginning, Lord, but wow. Somewhere down the line, they turned a corner and they didn't turn the right corner. How easily we can make the same mistake. But Lord, through it all, as we've seen, you, you were always there for them. You were, they were, you were church. and You were on the other side of the door, as David said, just knocking. Saying, let me back in. Lord, we love you. Use this church for your glory and honor. Remember the prayer request mentioned this morning, Lord. To you goes the glory. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.